Our community is an enclosed contemplative one, a second order of the Society of St. Francis, an Anglican order. Their life goes on of prayer and praise to God. In the mid-1970s, three sisters from the Anglican community of St. Clair, a religious order based at Freeland near Oxford in England, were invited to set up an Australian sister house. Their leader was Angela Solling, a sculptor who grew up in Maitland, New South Wales, and studied at this Slade school in London before becoming a nun. Sister Angela's plan was to build a mud brick monastery in the bush in the Upper Hunter. Joining the congregation of the beautiful old 1833 Church of St. John the Evangelist in Stroud, the sisters lived in the adjoining rectory while they enlisted support from locals and raised any necessary funds. This is the room where the sisters used to pray. The bishop offered them this rectory as their home and they went out each day to dig the mud and make the bricks. She was doing God's work. We went up and helped make the mud bricks and everything and she was the one that instigated it all and showed us how to do it and she, she reached out to everybody. It didn't matter whether you're a Catholic or, or even a non-believer. If she could help you, she would help you. Sister Angela was an artist, a visionary and a practical, hard-working woman who had been inspired by the extraordinary story of St. Clair. St. Clair was born in the central Italian town of Assisi during the 12th century. She was a contemporary of St. Francis and was so inspired by his teachings that at the age of 18, she renounced all her possessions and became a nun. The sisters had a great tradition to live up to, trying to transfer the values of that 12th century order to Australia. And all the sisters had to start with, apart from their deep faith, was that free accommodation in the local St. John's Rectory. Forty years today since the Monastery of the Blessed Virgin Mary where the sisters lived was dedicated and also the Hermitage of St. Bernardine for the Brothers. Life of the Franciscan presence among us took root on that soil and give thanks for your presence among us and pray for the continued life of the Franciscan spirit um, among us here at St. John's. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May you be a new creation. May you be Christ to those to whom God shall send you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amazing sense of vision, these hopes bound up in the construction of the place. And the involvement of the community, I think, adds to local ownership of the Franciscan spirit. The fact of the old monastery still continuing and with the, the friends of the old monastery committee um, working to preserve not only the Franciscan spirit of the monastery but also ensuring that the monastery has a continued use shows the, the enduring worth of, of the place. Near the monastery and on the other side of a lily pond a hermitage for the brothers was also built which is still occupied by the brothers today. There is a great continuity of life in this place. It's sad that there is no community of, of sisters in the monastery at the moment, but we've been able to keep a small community of brothers here all that time, and we are here just at a small moment of time in a, in a much longer time frame. But the important thing is that we live our life here as we are each day. We praise God, we pray, we, we do what we need to support our life in this place. How it all began was our community is an enclosed contemplative world. Their faith was soon rewarded with an early breakthrough because a local farmer entered into the spirit of the mission and offered a block of land just north of Stroud at a low price, which they bought with the help of generous local supporters. Luckily, Sister Angela and the nuns had received some publicity so this was inspiring people to come forward. 
including a local builder, Kevin Osmond, who provided the second breakthrough when he offered to help build the monastery free of charge because he wanted to promote the virtues of mud bricks as building materials. We decided to build out of this living stuff the earth. Angela was not just the public face of the project and the driving force. She also helped with the building and was hands-on from the start, working hard even in her traditional brown habit. As it was such an inspired cause, helpers came from near and far, providing machinery and building bricks out of local mud. One of these was Trevor Robards, still living in Stroud today. Every Friday afternoon, I bet they make some mud, rain, hail or shine, and you get a full bucket of it and just keep on mixing it over and then you drag it back and mix it over and drag it back and mix it over and you kept on doing that till it was, the water was just about running out of it. And the next morning you'd be ready to make the bricks. I'd make about three to four hundred bricks a day, but there was a lot of bricks in that place, I'll tell you. Sister Andrew, she was the biggest rag ever seen. Yeah, she used to call me Trevor the Forklift. Oh, I loved splashing them with the mud. It was good fun. We used to have a good fun. One of the original muddies who made bricks and trained as an architect was a former novice Franciscan brother, Christopher Nash, who worked on the monastery from the start to finish and added creative buildings. After the completion of the monastery, Sister Angela explained the life that she and others then led there from the 1980s. We had to adapt to the Australian scene, the Australian character, the Australian way of thinking. So there was the wimple, the veil that we were wearing. That went, the thick habits went. Uh, that was all external stuff. But when it came to adapting to the spirituality from the, uh, the Celtic background of England, the, the European way of thinking, the white way of thinking, as I say, it was sort of, Angela, you're uh, changing our whole life by changing these things. And I'm saying, I'm not changing at all those kernel things that was Claire's life in the 12th century. Uh, she was a feminist, she was a, a woman of prayer, she was a mystic, and all these things we had to discover and learn and live it. This is why we are where we are now, reliving this, this new old way of life. Sister Angela was well ahead of her time, always had an environmental purpose and a passion to connect with Australia's first peoples, hence the word Ganya Kiara, which means house of healing. In a way, this whole building was a giant sculpture. We sculpted it out of nothing, out of earth, so that was good, that satisfied me, but as an artist, we had, I believe, and I say this to all artists who are religious, for goodness sake, keep your art going because it keeps balance in your life. I said to our Reverend Mother, I'm really an artist, and then I'm a nun. And she laughed and said, Angela, one of these days you'll say you are a nun and then you're an artist. And I said, well, you know, come the happy day. It is a special place for an artist to go because of these beautiful little touches and rhythm with nature and the love of beauty and the stillness and serenity. And the committee has been there to look after it, to care for it, to nurture it and to provide it for people to be able to go. It's an oasis, a place where you can enjoy life in its purity, away from all of the hurly-burly of city life and to retreat and to refresh. And it's such a very great gift for everyone to enjoy in the future. So please come so we can ensure that it's kept as a vision from Angela over her life, which she hoped would happen for generations to come. Today, thanks to the inspiration of St. Clair and Sister Angela's vision, the Mud Brick Monastery still stands unique in Australia in its beautiful bush setting. Sister Angela and all the sisters did succeed in realising their mission. Thanks to many, many volunteers, the legacy lives on 
as the old monastery is now available for retreats and workshops that help to keep the Franciscan ideals alive today. Isn't this great? Now, how about that? Isn't it marvellous? <laughs> you always say it's marvellous. Well, it is marvellous. <laughs>